ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಂಧಸ್ಯಾನಂಜನಾಶಲಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುಂದಿತಂಜೈನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುವೆ ನಮಃ ಮೂಕಂ ಕರೋತಿ ಪಾಚಾಲ ಪಂಗು ಲಂಗಾಯತೆ ಗಿರಿ ಯತ್ಕೃಪಾಥರಹಂ ಬಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ದೀನಚಾರುಣ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಮಾರವ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೇತನ್ಯೇಶ್ವರ So we see the demigods are praying to Lord Shiva. So they're praying because they want something. What do they want? They want that the poison which is spreading everywhere from the churning of the ocean of milk should be absorbed by Lord Shiva. He should take care of it. Sometimes there's big tankers they carry oil and travel across the ocean and if they have an accident all of the oil leaks into the ocean so it's a big catastrophe cleaning it up right and it poisons so many uh fish and seabirds so the government has to step in to clean up the oil spill once they had one just off the coast here in um Bombay in oil spill and all the black oil was coming up on Juhu beach so in the same way the demigods are requesting lord shiva to take care of this poison spill that's spreading everywhere and this is the nature of the demigods the demigods are always faithful to the supreme lord right they're faithful but at the same time they want something right, right? they're attached they have attachments as opposed to pure devotees of the lord the pure devotees of the lord have no attachments right? they're not after the lord for anything they don't want to get anything from the lord rather their intention is to do something for the pleasure of the lord that's the difference between a devotee and a pure devotee and demigods are devotees no doubt they know that the supreme personality of godhead is krishna and that they're meant to serve krishna and they perform their services um one demigod is controlling the sun as a service to krishna and one demigod is controlling the air as a service to krishna and one demigod is controlling the water as a service to krishna right they're doing service but they're not free from attachments and in, and they come to the lord to uh solve various problems but we see the pure devotee of the lord they're not interested to bother the lord with their problems their only concern is how to please the lord and how to satisfy the lord so this is the difference between the demigods and the devotees uh pure devotees actually <clears throat> because of this because of attachments the demigods cannot completely understand the lord nobody actually can completely understand the lord because the lord is uh achintya is inconceivable but the lord can reveal himself to the devotee who has love for him exclusive propad uses the word unalloyed love right without any other contamination love for krishna so to such devotees they can understand about the lord by the mercy of the lord by his transcendental arrangement krishna says in the bhagavad gita no one can know me right no one can know me but at the same time although no one can know the lord the lord can reveal himself to his devotees and he does 
because of his affection for the devotees who are fully dependent on him. The devotees are dependent on the Lord for everything. He makes himself known to them. And so how is it that the devotees can attract the attention of the Lord? And that's by devotional service, which begins by chanting his holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prays, Cheto Dharpana Marjanam, that the holy name of the Lord <coughs> clears the consciousness of the living entity. Right? It, uh, <coughs> marjanam means clean. <coughs> so when we use the word marjanam, clean, cleaning, we think of dirt, right? So if the consciousness is covered over with dirt, what is that dirt? What is it? Well, it's the idea that I'm something other than the servant of Krishna. The clear consciousness, pure consciousness, is that I am the servant of Krishna. Eternally, the servant of Krishna. Okay? And any other consciousness is dirt. It's covered. It's a covering. Right? So the living entity gets born in a particular family, in a particular country, community, and all of these identifications that the living entity has piles up the dirt. Right? It just keeps getting thicker and thicker. So the living entity can't see in the dharpana. Dharpana means? Sisha. Mirror. The glass. Reflection. Right? We, we understand who we are by what we see out in, in front of us and how that reflects back to us. That's what we perceive ourselves to be. <clears throat> right? Um, Prabhupada tells a story. Right? There was a person who had an enemy. Right? And so that enemy, wherever the person went, Right? He used to tell him, you're a ghost. Right? So whether he was going to the market, his friend would, this enemy would come up behind him and say, you're a ghost. Or if he was, <clears throat> wherever he was going, or wherever he was, that enemy was there and saying, you're a ghost. So after some time, he used to, he began to believe that he was a ghost now. They become a ghost. So this is the material world, right? We, because of our interactions with the material nature, that that reflects back on us, and we we take that as our identity. Right? So that has been going on for a very long time. Not only in this life, but in many lives, many lifetimes. So the, the, the dirty, the dirt has accumulated for so many lifetimes, it's very thick amount of dirt. But the chanting of the holy name of the Lord clears away, clears away. Uh, just like if you have a gold nugget, but it's covered by many layers of dirt. If you clear off all the layers of dirt, then you can come to the pure gold. In the same way, because of so much I, false identifications, we can't understand who we really are. And what is our identity? Right? 
when we chant the holy name of the Lord, right, what perception of the self, what are we supposed to see in the mirror of, the, of our consciousness? What, how are we supposed to perceive? What is a reflection that we're supposed to take on, which is the reality? What is that? Who said that? Right. Servant of Krishna. This is the idea. Uh, now, there are many servants of Krishna. You can serve Krishna as in, in a neutral way, like the yogis. The yogis meditate on the Lord, but they have a neutral relationship with the Lord. In other words, they're enamored by the beauty of the Lord, the yogis. You know, they, they see the forearm farm of the Lord, and he has a club and a disc and a lotus flower and a conch, and they meditate on how many spokes are in his disc, and they meditate on the, the club, the Lord's club, dripping with the blood of the demons. Like this, they meditate. And his garland, which is made of five kinds of fragrant flowers. Right? And the bees are humming around the garland of the Lord. So they meditate. But why is it, then why is it called neutral, you know? Santaras. Why? They're pretty absorbed in the Lord's beautiful farm, right? They like to see and meditate. Why is it Santa Ras? Well, even, you know, that seeing the farm of the Lord, that's also a kind of interaction. You know, if you go to a a rock show, and you see the rock stars, you, you know, you, there's some relationship, right? You're appreciating whatever. The relationship is there. But what doesn't come to the mind of the those in Santaras is to do some service. The yogi doesn't think, what can I do for the Lord? He's simply absorbed in his meditation on the Lord's farm and his, and, and, the Lord's qualities, etc. But the next step should be, or could be, for one who's in Dasyuras, what can I do for you? Can I get you something? Right? Can I make a garland for the Lord? Can I cook something for the Lord? Dasya, service. Right? And then there is Vatsalya, no? Nay, Sakya, friend of the Lord, the Lord's friend. They have a unique relationship with the Lord um, in friendship. And there's so many examples. Of course, the highest friends are in Vrindavan, Sudama, Varutapa, right? Who are some of the other ones? Huh? Stoka Krishna, Arjun, right? They're in uh, Goloka, and there's they have this relationship with the Lord that they they like to play with him, right? One of the cowherd boyfriends comes early in the morning to the house of Mother Yashoda, and she helps he helps Mother Yashoda put on the Lord's dhoti so that he can go out and tend the cows. Right? Friendship. Friendship. And then parental. Parental affection. Parental affection. The Lord actually provides everything every living entity needs. Nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam. Right? 
The Lord provides. And so in most religious philosophical understandings of the Lord, they see God as the Supreme Father. Right? In fact, the Christians pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Right? Give us our daily bread. Right? So Father, what's a father do? He supplies the things the children want. Isn't it? What is the business of the children? Father, give me this. Father, give me that. Can I get this? Can I get that? Right? And what does the father do? Okay, okay. Take it, take it, take it. But we see that the relationship of Vatsaliras is that the devotee becomes the parent of the Lord. Because of their intensity of love that they have for the Lord, they want to be in a position where they're always giving things to the Lord. Right? Like Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj. Right? Mother Yashoda's thinking, if I don't cook for Krishna, if I don't feed him, he'll get sick. If I don't feed him, he'll get sick. Now, does the, if the Supreme Lord doesn't eat, does he get sick? No, of course not. But that's her bhava. That's her feeling of devotion for the Lord in Vatsaliras. And then... In these rasas, in, in Dasya, Santya is also there. In Sakya, Santa, Dasya is also there. In Vatsalya is also containing Sakya, Santa, and uh, Dasya. So then you come to Madhuri Ras. Right? And this is uh, the Ras where the devotee is completely in love with the Lord. Right? Their relationship is on the platform of Madhurya. So, of course, people in general misunderstand this, and they think that the relationship is something like the attraction of young boys and young girls, which is completely wrong. Right? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was such a strict sannyasi, very strict, once he heard in the Jagannath temple the singing of the uh, Govinda Lilamrita by one Devidasi. Right? And he became attracted so much by that singing that he went to, to embrace the singer. Right? And he was running. And his servant, what's his servant's name? Govinda. So Govinda grabbed him and said, My dear Lord, that's a lady singing. So he said, Oh, Govinda, you saved my life. So such a strict sannyasi. Why would he be attracted to hear the pastimes of Krishna in the gopis if they were ordinary dealings of young boys and young girls in the material world? They're transcendental. But one can only understand that if one has performed sufficient devotional service. Devotional service is required. What kind of devotional service? Unalloyed devotional service. Without any tinge for the desire for enjoying the result of any kind of fruit of activity, or any kind of mental speculation, or obtaining some kind of mystic perfection. Right? So as devotees of the Lord, we have to keep in mind that the demigods, they're also devotees. They're devotees. But they have material attachments. 
right? They want something. So we always have to be careful in our relationship with the Lord that we don't become like the demigods. We're already like the demigods in one sense. If we get some trouble, somebody says something to us, we go to the Lord, are Taklik Dereng, Urubad Mashe, right? But this is not, we have, we have to see the pitfalls in this, right? We have to take the instruction from the devotees so that we can get to a higher platform. And what is that higher platform? Anyabilashatashramyam janani kumadiyanabritam anakulyena krishnanu shilanam bhakta uttamam without any desire for anything else except the pleasure of the Lord. Of course, it's pious, certainly is pious to come to the Lord for the solution of your problem. Srila Prabhupada even said, you can go to the Lord and say, my dear sir, please help me, I have this problem. But at the same time, we should understand that it's <clears throat> it's not pure devotional service. It's not where we want to be ultimately. So this holy name is so powerful that it Cheto Darpana Marjnam not only means that the holy name will take us to understand that we're the eternal servant of Krishna, but the holy name of Krishna will take us all the way to understand that we're the eternal servant of Krishna exclusively. To the highest platform of pure devotional service, the holy name, Cheto Dharpana Marjan. Those, the very first sentence of the Shikshastakam by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says it all. It's right from the, it takes one right from the beginning stage, right up to the highest platform of Madhuri Ras. So this Madhuri Ras is going on in the spiritual world, right? Krishna is interacting with the gopis. It's very exclusive, right? No one can enter into that relationship unless they're completely free from any bewilderment. Certainly the demigods can't enter. Right? They become bewildered. Look at Indra. Indra didn't recognize that Krishna was the supreme. So Krishna said, okay, I, I'm going to have to teach him a lesson. Right? So when Nanda Maharaj was about to worship Indra, Krishna said, wait a minute. Let's worship Govardhan Hill instead. Right? And, and so, Indra became very upset, right? And he tried to destroy all the bridge bosses and all the cows by a big storm. Nowadays, they give them names, Harvey, Irma, right? In those days, it was just... Thundering, lightning, pillars of rainfall coming down. But Krishna protected the inhabitants of Vrindavan by lifting Govardhan Hill. And at that point, after so many days, Indra realized his mistake. And he could understand who this talkative little boy really was. Right? So the demigods, they also, you know, they don't always recognize the Lord. Lord Brahma also was trying to test. He knew this was the Lord, but he wanted to see his power. So he used some of his own power by hiding the cows and the calves and the cowherd boys. 
But Krishna took advantage of the opportunity to expand himself as all the cowherd boys and all the calves just to increase, increase the pleasure of the parents of the boys and the mothers of the calves by becoming them himself, expanding himself. So this holy name is so very powerful. It can take us all the way to that consciousness. But of course, um, the name has to be uh, chanted with a quality and a purity, right? But first of all, we have to chant prescribed number of rounds, right? following the instructions of Krishna's pure devotee. There's no question of chanting purely if you don't chant. Right? It's the most powerful process. But if you don't do it, then how, how will you be benefited? Right? And there's many excuses not to chant, I'm busy, a Prabhuji, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. But what are you preaching if you don't chant? Sixteen rounds. So that's the first thing. Forget about quality of chanting. That comes later. First has to be chanting. Right? Chanting sixteen rounds. You can chant more, but at least chant sixteen. On the codice, they make the announcement, Okate, Today, everyone will chant 25 rounds. Hare Bhavati, Solamalabine Kare. What's the use of announcing? They should announce on the Kadasi, okay, everyone chants 16 rounds. The, the, <clears throat> power of the holy name is been described by Srila Sukadeva Goswami to Maharaj Prikshit in the second canto, first chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, text number 11. Should we read it? Should we read it? Is it okay? Etan nirvidyamananam ichitam akutabayam yoginam nripa nirnitam harer namanu kirtanam. Translation O king, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of the great authorities is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all, including those who are free from all material desires, those who are desirous of all material enjoyment, and also those who are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. In the previous verse, I'll read the purport. In the previous verse, the great necessity for attaining attachment to Kovinda has been accredited. There are different types of persons who desire to attain success in different varieties of pursuits. Generally, the persons are materialists who desire to enjoy the fullest extent of material gratification. Next to them are the transcendentalists, who have attained perfect knowledge about the nature of material enjoyment, and thus are aloof from such an illusory way of life. So there are some people that think obtaining material enjoyment, that's the goal of life, to acquire so many things for enjoyment, right? A bank balance, a bungalow, a BB, a bacha, the bees, BMW, right, bank balance, Right? This is it. If you have all these things, 
And generally, people accept that wherever you go. This is what they think he's successful, successful person. Right? But here, Srila Prabhupada is saying they're crass materialists. They're materialists. But there are some persons who realize the falsity of such a consciousness. Right? And they're called transcendentalists. They figured it out that even though you work really hard for all these things, in the end, you're still not happy. A man works hard, he provides his family with everything, and then he becomes old, and he has to retire, because he just can't keep going, right? So then the children don't look at him with the same respect that they did before, and his physical abilities become reduced. He can't chastise his kids anymore. Rather, they chastise him. Right? Everything becomes reversed in short time. So some persons, they figure this out ahead of time, and they say, oh, I'm not going to waste my time for that. More or less, they're satisfying themselves by self-realization. But above them are the devotees of the Lord, who neither aspire to enjoy the material world, nor desire to get out of it. They are after the satisfaction of the Lord, Sri Krishna. Isn't that what we were talking about? Right? They're not trying to enjoy the world. They're not trying to get out of it. They're simply trying to satisfy Krishna. In other words, the devotees of the Lord do not want anything on their personal account. If the Lord desires, the devotees can accept all sorts of material facilities. And if the Lord does not desire this, the devotees can leave aside all sorts of facilities, even up to the limit of salvation. That means they don't even mind coming, they don't mind coming back to the material world if it satisfies the Lord. If that's what the Lord wants, okay? Janmini Janmini Ishwade, Bhavatad Bhakti Rahayta Kita. Just let me be in your bhakti. <coughs> Nor are they satisfied, well, in, in this verse, Sri Sukadeva Goswami recommends the transcendental chanting of the holy name of the Lord by offenseless chanting and hearing of the holy name of the Lord, one becomes acquainted with the transcendental form of the Lord, and then with the attributes of the Lord, and then with the transcendental nature of his pastimes. The form, the attributes, and then the pastimes by chanting the holy name. Right? The highest pastime. What's the, what's the culmination of all the pastimes of the Lord? Of course, all the pastimes of the Lord are transcendental. They're completely free from any material uh, influence. But by the, the authorities consider the highest pastimes of the Lord. Radha and Krishna and, and Krishna interacting with the gopis in the Ras Lila, the highest pastime of the Lord, right? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. But he wanted to experience the love that his devotees have for him. He saw that his devotees are enjoying their love for him even more than he enjoys. So he wanted to see, he wanted to taste what is that love that my devotees have for me? This is very confidential, by the way. Because most people think Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to spread the Yuga Dharma, which he did. But that was a side issue. That wasn't the real issue. I'm, I'm explaining to you the real issue. 
He wanted to taste the love his devotees have for him. He wanted to experience what it is it what is it in me that my devotees see? Why are they so carried away? He wanted to experience that. So in order to do that, the Lord manifested himself as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna, but not blackish. He's a golden form. He's in the, he's in the color of Srimata Radharani, because he's in the mood of Srimata Radharani, experiencing the love the devotee has for the Lord, experiencing the nectar the Lord uh, the devotee experiences in relationship with the Lord. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu not only wanted to experience that, but he wanted everyone to experience that. Come to that platform. So he thought, let me bring that Ras Lila down to the material world and give it to everybody. How can I do that? How can I do that? How did he do it? Golokair Premadan Harir Nama Sankirtan. He transported that highest level of devotion for Krishna, the Ras Lila, and he brought it down to this material world in the form of. Hare Nam Sankirtan. Sankirtan is such an elevated thing. When you enter into Hare Nam Sankirtan, you're out of the material world. You've transported yourself to the spiritual world. Right? So therefore, Sugadeva Swami is recommending that it's the the doubtless, no doubt about it, it's an elevated, transcendental situation to be on the Harinam Sankirtan and fearless, fearless. What are people afraid of in this world? What are they afraid of? They're afraid they're going to die. If they die, they lose baby, bungalow, bank account, and if they're in the village, they're buffaloes. Right? Right? You lose it. So they're afraid. Bhayam. But if one dies when they're doing Harinam Sankirtan, what is a loss? No loss at all. One gains the transcendental position in the Goloka Vrindavan Dham. So, a doubtless, fearless position. So now this is Harinam Sankirtan week. We want to encourage everyone to participate in the Harinam and experience this highest form of love of Godhead which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu transported to the material world in the form of his Sankirtan movement. Harinam Sankirtan Yagnaki. And it, it, the thing is, it, wherever you go, that rasa, that taste that's available in Harinam Sankirtan is available. Right? It may be in Bombay or Delhi or some big city in India. It can be a village somewhere, right? It can be on the streets in America somewhere, right? And inevitably, you, when you absorb yourself in the Sankirtan, in the Harinam, you become free from all fear, and wonderful things happen. Wonderful things happen. You can even meet Narada Muni. And because sometimes he comes to see who's chanting. So anyway, it's nine o'clock. We'll stop there. Are there any questions or comments, realizations 
uh, corrections, recommendations, anything. Yes? Microphone? Mic? Mic? हरे कृष्णा परोल जी परोल जी आप बोल रहे थे हमें नाम जप करना चाहिए शुद्धता से तो ये शारीरिक शुद्धता या मन की शुद्धता या नाम का शुद्धता Yes, pure chanting means to chant without offense. There's ten offenses to be considered in the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. And actually this purport that I was reading from, Second Canto, chapter 1, text number 11, Srila Prabhupada explains what the ten offenses are. The number one offense is to blaspheme the devotees who have dedicated their lives to propagating the holy name of the Lord. So you, many times we get caught up in criticizing, right? A group of devotees will come together and, and then just start criticizing another devotee, you know. So this is very detrimental to one's devotional service. You know, the devotees are very dear to Krishna. And Krishna is in your heart. So it pains him to hear that one devotee is criticizing another devotee. He doesn't like that. Right? So the res end result is that our chanting, we lose interest. We lose interest in the chanting. Right? We... Um, our, our minds go other places while we're chanting, you know. And ultimately, it could lead to stop chanting 16 rounds altogether. And that's just one of the offenses. There's 10 offenses, and they're all mentioned in that purport. If you go back and read the purport, you'll, you can understand what the offenses are. So pure chanting means chanting without offense. If you chant with offense... It's still better than not chanting at all. Because by offensive chanting, can somebody wake up that devotee? Chandra, you look like you're pretty tired. What time did you take rest? Huh? Okay, if you can't stay awake, stand up. Offensive chanting, by offensive chanting, there's offensive chanting, there's clearing chanting, and there's pure chanting, so each has a different result. What is the result of offensive chanting? Who can tell me? Where do you go after you leave the body if you would chant offensive, offensively? Anybody can tell me? What does Bhaktivinoda Thakur say? Harinam Chintamani, he explains where you go if you chant offensively and you leave the body. Anybody? Well, what he explains is, is that you go to the heavenly planets. So there's another stage, and that's called Nama Bas, when there's some dim reflection of the holy name. Right? You're, you're clearing away the offenses. The offenses are clearing away. So what's the result of that kind of chanting? Brahman realization. You enter into the Brahma Jodi. Even the demons go to the Brahma Jodi. They get killed by Krishna. Right? 
So what's the, what is the result of offenseless chanting, pure chanting? Spiritual world. Spiritual world. So we're looking for offenseless chanting. We're looking for pure chanting. By going out on Harinam Sankirtan and trying to chant the holy name of the Lord congregationally for the benefit of others to hear, Lord Chaitanya takes a special interest in the devotee that does that. So you can get special credit with the Lord by performing Harinam Sankirtan. The Lord takes um, care of the devotee that performs in that activity. So we need that kind of benefit. We need that kind of help. So everyone is encouraged to participate in the Harinam Sankirtan. Hare Krishna. Grantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Nitaigo Premanandi Hari Hari Bo.